This video will demonstrate how to design a fully restrained bolted end plate moment connection in VA Connect. Let's get started. In this example, a W21 by 62 beam will be connected to W14 by 90 columns in a moment frame. Since we want both the connections in the moment frame to have the same detail, two load sets will be used, one for the connection on the left and one for the connection on the right. VA Connect designs this connection according to the AISC design specification and according to the AISC design guide for using the four bolt unstiffened configuration. Note, the AISC Design Guide 4 procedure uses a yield line analysis to design the end plate and the column flange to ensure that both remain elastic and thick plate behavior is achieved. With thick plate behavior, the bolts are not subject to significant prying forces. We will start out in VA Connect by adjusting the geometry of the connection. Selecting a beam, a W21 by 62 will be chosen from the shape database. In the material database, we see that A992 grade 50 steel is used by default. Next, we will select a column and choose a W14 by 90 member from the database. Now with the geometry roughed in, we can look at the project status to see that the detailing is okay since the various detailing checks pass. Next, we will move on to apply the load to the connection. First, we will change the name of load set one to left connection and then we will enter the values for the dead load and for the wind load. For the left connection, the dead load and wind load will oppose each other. Next, we will create a second load set for the right connection and enter the values for the dead load and the wind load. For the right connection, the dead load and the wind load will be in the same direction. With the service level loans defined, we can go to the load cages manager and select which building code we want to use. Note the load combinations for the selected building code are generated automatically. With the load specified for the connection, we can now turn our attention to the project status to see the numerous limit states that are automatically checked. Immediately, we see that about half of the limit states are failing for the connection. Clicking on any limit state produces a detailed calculation for the controlling load set and load case. For the bolt shear, bearing, and tear out limit state, we see that the minimum of the shear, bearing, and tear out is calculated for each bolt and the values are summed to determine the capacity. For this case, bolt shear controls for both the inner and outer bolts over tear out and bearing. Also, we see a note that only the bolts on the compression side of the beam are effective in resisting shear. Switching back to the model view, we can now quickly modify the parameters of the connection to get the limit states to pass. First, let's increase the bolt diameter from 3 quarters of an inch to 7 eighths of an inch. Now, the bolt shear, bearing, and tear out limit states for the end plate and for the column flange pass, but the bolt tension rupture limit state still fails. Increasing the bolt diameter to 1 inch causes the bolt tension rupture to pass. Note, making the bolts stronger has now caused the end plate flexure and the column flange flexure limit states that were both originally passing to fail. Clicking on the end plate flexure limit state, we see the bolt force model and the equation for the no prime bolt tension rupture strength. We see that the end plate flexure design moment is a function of the no prime bolt tension rupture strength. Therefore, this limit state is not dependent on the applied load, which is required to ensure thick plate behavior so that the bolts do not pry. Increasing the thickness of the plate to one inch causes the end plate flexure to pass. Now we see that the remaining failing limit states are all associated with the column. Also, we see that the column stiffener design force is zero since we do not have stiffeners. While we could simply increase the column size to say a W14 by 120 to get the connection to pass, let's go back to the W14 by 90. Clicking on the column flange flexure limit state, we see that the column capacity for the unstiffened flange is less than the required design moment resulting of a unity value that exceeds 1. To increase the column flange flexure, we can specify that the column has stiffeners by checking the box in the Modify tab of the Project Manager. Now we see that the column capacity for the stiffened flange exceeds the required design moment, resulting in a unity value less than 1. 
Since the stiffener significantly increases the capacity of the flange, causing it to pass, they must be designed to resist a certain level of load. Clicking on the column stiffener design force, which is now applicable, we can see the demand on the column, which is the force applied to the column by the flanges. Additionally, we can see that the unstiffened column's capacity to resist this force is the smallest value from the column flange flexure of the unstiffened flanges, the column web yield, the column web buckling, and the column web crippling. For this case, the capacity of the unstiffened column is controlled by the column flange flexure. The stiffener demand is calculated as the demand on the column minus the capacity of the unstiffened column. Note, while VA Connect provides the stiffener demand, the stiffeners are not designed in VA Connect and must be designed by the engineer outside of the program. Looking at the project status, we see that the column web buckling and the column web crippling both have unity values of 1.0. This is the case since the entire capacity of the column for these limit states is used and the rest of the load is assumed to be resisted by the stiffener. Clicking on the column web buckling, we see that the flange force exceeds the capacity, but since the rest of the force is resisted by the stiffener, the unity equals 1 instead of exceeding 1. Looking at the column web yielding, we see that it has a unity value of less than 1 since the flange force is less than the capacity. If, however, we specify that the beam is located, say, 6 inches from the top of the column, we see that the column web yield unity value changes to 1 since the capacity for this limit state has dropped significantly, resulting in a significant level of demand being placed on the stiffener. Now we see that the column's capacity is limited by the column web yield instead of being limited by the column flange flexor, and the stiffener demand has significantly increased. Now, all of the limit states pass and the detailing of the connection is satisfactory. One final thing to note is that both the beam flange weld and the beam web weld can be set to use either double-sided fillet welds or complete joint penetration welds in VA Connect. With the design complete, we can switch to the report view to easily create a report to document our work. A concise design summary is automatically generated showing the unity value for each limit state. Also, we can add a detailed report showing the calculations for each limit state, or we can add summary tables for each limit state to the report. In just a few minutes, we have used VA Connect to create an optimal design for our bolted end plate connection and produce a report to document our work. To try VA Connect for yourself, head over to our website and download the free trial.